Hey, how's everybody doing today? Just uh, sitting out here building a fence. And, you know, I had a word in my heart that God has placed in my heart to share, especially with everything that's going on today. You know, the things you hear about Floyd and uh, the uh, word you hear racism being passed around so much. You're hearing um, argument between the Republicans and Democrats. You're hearing about this COVID-19. And what we must remember as those who are followers of Jesus Christ is that we must not get caught up in the things of this world. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2 tells us to set our affections on things above and not the things of this earth. Now, this is not trying to telling you to be so heavenly high that you know earthly good. Because remember, John 17, 16 said that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We don't do things the way that the world does things. You know, there was two guys, they were on their way to Emmaus, and Jesus appeared to them. This is after his death, burial, and resurrection. But Jesus Christ appeared to these two men, and he said in the book of uh, Luke chapter 24, I believe it's like verse 18, uh, I'm not sure, but it's in chapter 24. And he, he came to these two men who was talking. And when Jesus appeared to him, he said, uh, what manner of conversation are you having and wherewith you are now sad? See, these two men were having a conversation about how Jesus Christ was wrongly treated, how he was beat, how he was abused. And the conversation that they was having had them sad. And so he approached them about that. And that's something that we need to uh, acknowledge ourselves: Is the conversation that you are having, is it something that makes you sad? Is it something that's making you upset? Is it making you angry? See, you're falling into Satan's trap, body. And I just want everybody to know that Satan wants us talking about the things of this world. Because those things make us angry and upset. He wants us talking about the, the, the beating of Floyd. He wants to talk about this COVID-19. And he wants to talk about this word called racism that the world come up with, which is really the word respecter of person. James chapter 2 and verse 9 teach us that, which is something that is not new. It's not something that started in slavery. This is something that's been happening for years before any of us was even born. You look back in the book of Numbers chapter 12 and you see when Miriam uh, spoke against Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman, somebody that was outside of his nationality. You look in the Bible and you see the New Testament where the Jews uh, didn't like the Gentiles and want nothing to do with them because they were walking in respect of person, you know, looking at uh, esteeming one person higher than the other. Uh, and you still have that same thing today. I mean, Ecclesiastes 1 9 tells us that there is nothing new up under the sun. So we should not be surprised at the things that is going on in this world when we read the Bible, and the Bible clearly tells us and explains to us the things that are happening today so make sure that your conversation that you're having is not conversation that is not giving a grace to the hearer like Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 tells us we're supposed to be make sure the conversation that you are having or conversation that is seasoned with salt like Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6 tells you make sure that you are somebody who's speaking about things that edify and don't fall into this trap and snare of Satan and talking about the things of this world and focusing on the things of this world Jesus Christ when he approached them to Man, he wanted to really let them realize do they not realize what have happened when Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead how we're now able to be considered sons of the living God how we now able to have peace with the living God having our sins no longer imputed towards us but now having God's righteousness uh, imputed into our uh, into our account as we are in right standings now with God or now we have a covenant with the living God we have an angelic host that fight on our behalf we have so much more to be talking about that will edify and build people up instead of the things of this world that is bringing anger and bringing sadness to people so make sure that what you're talking about is something that is going to lift up people around you and not vex the spirit or cause even yourself to be saying I especially want to speak to you uh, ministers and inside your churches you know you got to know the state of your flock that's what the bible tells you in the book of proverbs chapter 23 and verse 27 right 27 23 to know the state of your flock you have people in your flock that are still carnal. You have people in your flock that are not born again. So when you're up on the pulpit talking about the things of this world, all you're doing is feeding that monster that is already inside of them. You're feeding that uh, angry temper, that uh, um, uh, 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 raging temper. You're, you're feeding those things. So be careful what you are talking about and what you are saying. If make sure that you're not falling into Satan's trap of talking about the things of this world and things that are not edifying, things that are not honoring God. We are not ignorant of Satan tactics. We are of the body of Christ. 
we do not do things the way the world do things. While the world is slandering and beating down those that's in authority, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 tells us that we're supposed to pray for those that's in authority. Protesting is not going to change anybody. Protest is not going to change anything. It's only one thing that's going to change people, and that is Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, sanctification of the word of the living God. John chapter 17, verse 17. That is the only thing that's going to change people's lives. God is the only one that's going to give you a new heart and a new spirit that's it god himself the living god the god and father the lord and savior jesus christ so what we need to do is to turn to the bible and stop turning to social media all right and stop turning to the ways of the ungodly i listen i heard this thing saying that uh, black lives matter well listen if you are a follower of jesus christ all lives matter not just african-american lives every life because jesus died for all every life on this earth matters so what we need to do is those who are followers of jesus christ we need to carry yourself as those that are represent representative of the kingdom of the living god and not fall alone with the things of this world we're told in first timothy chapter 2 with second timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 we read verse 2 3 and 4 that to not even tank myself with the affairs of this life so be careful what you're yoking together with be careful what you are falling along with be careful what you're saying and what you're conversating about because we are supposed to be peculiar people completely opposite of the world and not carrying ourselves like the ways of the world we walk in love in spite of what nationality or we still love each other we still caring for each other we still there to help each other and you unify together and build each other up not tear each other down because of the complexion of our skin tone we are followers of jesus first before you're someone of this world before you're an african-american before you're caucasian before you're spanish-american first jesus christ comes before that your faith comes before all of that so make sure that you're someone who is edifying building up and not conforming to this world have a blessed day